Ranking the best offensive abilities in Madden 24. We are here with a new tier list, and in today's video, I'm going to be ranking every single ultimate team ability you can use on the offensive side of the ball. And we'll probably have some repeats as well, but we're going to go ahead and get it started with the uh, the F tier real quick. We're going to get a little base F tier. Now, this is going to be something that I think is either just like straight up useless or also just you should avoid. And that's going to include things like Homer and stuff that really their main purpose is to just get your X factor faster. This really doesn't make a difference on a play to play basis for me. That's why it's f tier all right so now we're going to go ahead and talk about every single one of the abilities first one we got right here is agile extender now this is something that can do something i think the same thing is anchored extender as well pretty decent when there's a decent slot cb blitz in the game like dollar it's okay i'm gonna go ahead and put a d tier now after that we get fearless fearless i think is really really nice this year i don't think it's s tier i think it's more a this year which again it is really really nice to have i feel like when you get an under pressure and accurate in the pocket it is very unlucky i will say that for me right now like i said it's a tier it's nice to have but I don't think it's like you must have s tier you know what i'm saying now after that we have gift wrapped in my opinion gift wrapped is an s tier ability now there are some people out there that will say you don't need to run gift wrapped anymore i could not disagree more with those people the reason why okay first off with gift wrapped you can high ball every single receiver they won't drop the ball second off you get a huge catch and traffic boost third off every time your receiver gets a diving animation as well which is actually somewhat common they will drop that as well without gift wrap so in my opinion if you're playing without gift wrap you are playing at a major disadvantage even if you don't highball and after that we got gunslinger gunslinger for me is a tough one because i'm like is it s tier is it this is my thing right do you need gunslinger i think on some quarterbacks it's not like a must have on others it is though i'm gonna go ahead and put it s tier right now though kind of was debating a or s but i could i could see either work now after that we get gutsy scrambler this is a ability that i'm actually very interested in when we start to get even crazier uh ap discounts this is essentially fearless but out of the pocket i kind of want to put it right by fearless because i think rolling out right now is so good yeah i really i really don't hate that man i really Really don't it's like i said it's essentially fearless outside the pocket now after that we get how route master i'm also going to be covering backyard qb right by this i know it looks like route tech but this is actually backyard qb and backyard qb is essentially how route master plus qb playmaker so if how route master is an s tier ability this is too i didn't have joe montana's master tactician on here but that would also be in the s tier as well now after that we got human joystick human joystick i think is literally just a definition of like okay like i don't feel like it's overpowered by any means i feel like it's just a cool ability you can turn directions a little bit better uh maybe it could be b tier for me i wouldn't hate that i'll lean b tier right now like i said it's just overall really solid i don't think it's broken by any means i think identifier this year is like c tier the reason why i'm saying this okay yes you can see the user which is nice i just feel like with a lot of popular defenses in the game you know who people are using 99% of the time, seriously. Last year when DB fire and like symmetrical defenses were really, really good, you didn't have this FS zone blitz that had a major tell with your safety coming in the box. You knew, like you didn't know who he was using, right? I feel like this made more of a difference last year. I think it's okay this year. And right after that, we got Jukebox. Jukebox for me is gonna go ahead and go in this S tier for sure. Jukebox is very, very good. Now, comboed with Jukebox, I'm gonna have abilities like Jukebox as well. And that includes evasive and evasive right here like i said so evasive essentially jukebox plus spin cycle i think spin cycle is again like c tier i don't think it's really great or anything but it's i think what makes evasive so good is jukebox now after that we have some dead eye abilities and we're just going to cover all these right by each other because i think it's actually pretty interesting all right so let's talk about the dead eye abilities long range dead eye i again think this is like okay i don't think it's by any means great i think it is like c tier it gives you perfect accuracy or the blue passes which are pretty important if you don't know what a blue pass is it's essentially like a green line 2k it is the perfect pass you can get after that we get no look dead eye this one for me just like it, it really encourages playing bad and it, it encourages like throwing cross body i don't really think this is that good for me i'm going to put it in the d tier now after that we have my favorite one roaming dead eye now you guys that have been watching the channel recently know how high i am on this i might be willing to say it's s tier i, I really might is it as valuable as how master set feet lead i'm gonna say it's just one of the best abilities to combo with something right i also don't think it's broken as well i really don't i think for the most part it just makes sense versus the meta defenses in the game rolling on stuff like this can totally see the argument for s maybe i'm underrating it because i'm so high on it i just feel like necessity in the game i feel like it's more like you know how master gunslinger gift wrap stuff like that like it, roaming dead is just great to have now, after that we get dashing dead eye now we also after that we'll talk about passively lead and set feet lead dashing dead eye versus um uh, roaming dead eye i'm gonna have them on the same exact tier by the way but it's just so dependent on what 
quarterback. Like it's so dependent on Sefi Lee for Pass Lead Elite. Now, Sefi Lee and Pass Lead Elite are the best abilities in the game, I think. I think this is actually what every single year makes offense so good. It's the fact that your quarterback can throw at the speed of light and zones just can't really react to it. When am I talking about Sefi Lee, Pass Lead Elite? Well, first off, don't let anyone tell you different. They are the same exact ability. They give the same exact velocity. The difference is when you roll out with Sefi Lead, you let go of Sprint to register as your feet set. That's really it. Pass Lead Elite, you hold Sprint. Now, we talk about roaming Deadeye for stashing Deadeye. If you set feet lead, use roaming Deadeye because when you roll out the pocket, guess what? You're going to want to let go of Sprint for roaming Deadeye to activate. Now, if you have set feet lead with dashing Deadeye, one of these abilities isn't going to work based on what you do. Pass lead elite, however, should work with dashing Deadeye because when you run out the pocket and you hold Sprint, both of these abilities should activate. So that's the main difference, in my opinion, between like why I run set feet lead and roaming. Also, I'm just totally used to letting go of Sprint too. You have to, you used to have to do it a lot in Madden 20. Now after that, we get high point dead eye um i think high point dead eye and low point dead eye are both pretty useless sideline dead eye perfect passes on the sideline for me i'm also going to put this in the c tier as well after that we get pocket dead eye which i really do like i'm going to put this b tier because it just is a good ability to have if you are a pocket passer and again the reason you would do that is if you can't get good timing by yourself on that placement and accuracy setting this just auto blue passes for you in the pocket now after that we got playmaker now this is in my opinion is qb playmaker wide receiver playmaker Maker, running back playmaker whatever i think i don't think it's crazy this year i really don't i think c is okay like it's a, you know it's it's a solid ability it's not like needed by any means i think qb okay so this is what we're gonna do this right here is qb playmaker i'm gonna put qb playmaker b running back or like an individual playmaker c it's just qb playmaker is just nice because you get it on everyone automatically now we get inside dead eye right here this is better pass this is this is perfect accuracy on like inside throws i'm gonna go ahead and put this in the d tier lofting dead eye i'm also gonna put in the d tier as well inside that i actually i don't mind it i'm actually gonna move that up to c i think it's better than loft i think lofting is probably lofting and low point should probably be f tier so quick draw is kind of useless when you have gunslinger because it's just gunslingers everywhere quick draws under pressure for a quick uh, quicker release i don't think it's terrible I just think there's no point because a gunslinger. I'm gonna go ahead and put this D tier right now. And after that, we get recuperation. This uh, we're gonna cover like a lot of these all by each other. Um, this is also oh, I put second wind in the wrong spot. But so this were this is stamina abilities for me. I think they're all D tier. I don't think they are overpowered by any means. But just getting your running back like full stamina on the field, I don't think is bad at all. So we're gonna go ahead and have we have some uh, duplicates of like recuperation and second wind energizer as well. Same exact thing for me. When you get it for zero AP, it's also just really good value. Now after that, we get safety valve to the running back i actually don't think this does anything i'm gonna put that f tier slide of hand i also think is uh just does nothing i'm gonna put an f tier i really wanted to do something though where you get better uh what's called double moves versus when it's like man coverage man i believe this right here is tight out this right here is uh what's called fast break on the quarterback tight out for me i also think does basically nothing i think it's basically gift wrapped but only for your tight end and fast break I don't think is good this year. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to put it like D tier. Um, I tried to run fast break with the Ravens offense and I didn't really like it. And right after that, we get bulldozer. I just don't think trucking is great this year. This is another one that I'm going to go ahead and put in the D tier. We get protected right here on the quarterback. This basically gives your lineman all day, which it really doesn't help off the rip to win, but it does help. The, like it makes them not shed as frequent. So I like protected being in B tier. And speaking of all day, we might as well put all day in the B tier as well, because I have very similar thoughts on it's just protected is for all the offensive linemen but now you do get some zero ap uh, offensive lineman abilities like josh myers with all day and after that we get conductor faster hot routes this is another one that i always just think is so it's good but it's not overpowered either i think b tier is a great spot for it could maybe see it a tier as well i think conductor is really really nice being able to get the uh the extra hot routes out faster now after that we get on go on a little string of uh, offensive line abilities we get edge protector to me there's just no point to run edge protector when secure protectors here so edge protector for me is like d tier this year it really doesn't do anything it only really activates first edge threat but secure protector is quite literally the counter for every single good defensive ability in the game run stopping ability counters it um unstoppable forces counters it i love secure protector and we're starting to get some players that get this for zero ap this is an ability that i think by the end of the year everyone will have five of them on the offensive line now after that we get fool me once this is a pretty solid zero ap ability but it's also worse than all day in my opinion i'm gonna go ahead and put this in the c tier lifeguard matador tear proof uh what's called tough nut 
and even natural talent. Very similar thoughts on all these, even unspun as well. In my opinion, I think like natural talent is the best. So you start the game with blocker resistance. I think this is B tier. I think all these are just okay. They're all solid. Like I don't think they're trash. I'm, I think if you can get them for uh, what's called what, zero AP, they're great. They won't stop unstoppable forces and stuff, but I think they're literally all just okay. They'll help with blocker resistance a little bit with certain moves. I think that's a little bit more valuable than say like stamina abilities as well. Like I, I like them. I like these offensive line abilities. Now, would I say I would spend AP on them? No, but I, if you can get them for zero, I don't hate it. Nasher Streak's starting to get a little bit interesting. We're starting to get some for discount, like heavy discount. I would probably put it B tier as well. Maybe could see the argument for A tier. It just, uh, it's so dependent on what you play against. Cause like for six, one, it's not going to go that crazy. Like it, it, it can, if you, you get on the uh, top safeties, just really depends what you play if it's a or b tier in my opinion Ooh, i think because linebackers are so good too i think you're more likely to play linebackers you know what i'll lean a tier i'll lean a tier for nasty streak honestly if you're just a runner though it's probably an s tier ability after that we get a puller elite right here this is one that i'm gonna go ahead and put in the d tier as well it's not insane by any means but it's pretty much when your offensive lineman pulls when they get latched onto the block they're gonna stay on it so that's that's pretty much how i would summarize that screen protector right here i mean if you run a lot of screens okay but besides that man i think it's pretty useless threat detector right here so this is another one that i kind of have similar thoughts to identifier now i do think it's better than identifier i would put this in the b tier this this is my thing though right for threat detector again when you play stuff this year for the most part you know who's blitzing like six one they're either sending six at you or they're sending the four man disengage dollar they have a major tell with the safety coming into the box if they're sending the a gap i do still think this is nice though and that's why i'm also gonna have this ability right here it's called omniscient which is essentially identifier plus threat detector in the a tier now, this is one that I could see S tier as well. Uh, really depends on what you value. And after that, we get post up. This is another one I'm putting top end of A tier. So post up is really, really nice for inside stuffs. Uh, I, I like it on the center or the guards. That's what I would recommend. You either run it on your center or the two guards. And I think when you're not getting blitzed, a lot of people, they just send three. And this really, really helps for a send three. Um, a, a lot of times in this game, like Madden's been like this since Madden 21. They'll actually shed faster first a double team block than a regular block. Very stupid. Like they just instantly split it post up, make sure that doesn't happen. So I like post up. I always think it's pretty good. And it also works in the run game as well. Now we go on a little bit of run of receiver ability. So matchup nightmare. When we're talking about tight end, I think it's higher. Um, running back's cool too. I think this is overall just a B tier ability. I think it's great. It lights up everywhere. Now, for the most part, I think it's just placebo, but it lights up everywhere. And I think it's good on running backs. I think it's good on tight ends. All right, now we get a bunch of like in elites. And when I, like when I say in elite or whatever, right? Like short and elite, mid and elite, mid out, deep in, deep out. And we also have deep elite as well now. So uh, let's talk about mid in first mid out. Mid in is another one that I just think is a really good ability. I'm going to put a B tier. There's actually a decent amount of these for zero AP as well well so i think it's honestly maybe s tier value now mid and elite what, what route so it's really it's really like a lot of deeper post route if you run the Bengals playbook or the bears playbook post wheel drag or mesh spot post route will light up every single time with mid and elite now when we talk about mid out elite i think this is a lot worse i mean i'd rather run mid out than everything in uh, d tier now we get short in short out uh short in once it, short in is kind of some it's not s tier by any means but i would say short in's like a or like b plus now this can absolutely fry man coverage like it did last year it's just not as good right like we don't you just don't play man a ton that's why like the in elites i'm kind of just like you know a little bit 50 50 on a uh, short alley this is a, this is one that i actually think is pretty bad this year i'm gonna put it c tier as well that's not to say it's like trash it's just when we talk about last year how it would instantly beat man press doesn't do that this year after that we get deep in deep out and deep elite now deep elite as an ability is probably a tier it's just, it's the combo of deep in plus deep out. It's just not great from an AP perspective. So for me, I'm going to drop that, that into the B tier because of that. Now we get deep in, deep out, deep in. I don't love, I'm going to go ahead and put this C tier, but deep out. However, I do love now. This is the one that I, I'm going to put deep out A tier, by the way. So deep out, I feel like it gives you better sideline animations and it's not, it doesn't like counter KOs or anything or anything like that. But I, I just like the sideline animation. I think you're guaranteed a toe tap when you have deep out. All right, now we get some apprentices we get a ton of apprentices in a row so this is called s if no hara master okay so these are the apprentice abilities like outside apprentice gives you c routes skinny posts slot apprentice running back apprentice literally every single one right and we're just going to go ahead and put a tight end apprentice as well all the apprentices are going right here because they are technically in my opinion s tier abilities because they give you the routes it's just 
if you have Howard Master, they serve you no purpose. So that's my thoughts on this. We have running back apprentice slash backfield master, tight end apprentice, slot apprentice, outside apprentice. All of them are great. I should say wide receiver apprentice as well. All right, now we got reach for it. Reach for it. I can never get this to activate. I think it actually does nothing. Red zone threat. Red zone threat is okay. It just isn't. It doesn't counter KOs or anything. I'm gonna put a B tier. I don't mind that. Red zone threat and B tier. It can somewhat help you in the red zone. I like it. Now we get route tech. This is another one that I'm gonna go ahead and have A tier. I don't think it's S tier because you just don't play a lot of man coverage. And there's a lot of things I would run over route tech, but I mean, Jerry Rice, uh, 95 overall gets it for one AP. You have one AP to spend. I don't hate route tech. You get runoff elite right here. This is something that some people are starting to get for zero AP. I don't think it's great. I'm gonna go ahead and put a D tier. Now we get slot automatic right here. I'm gonna also put slot automatic in the A tier as well, uh, right by route tech i think if you have this on your slot receiver it actually can go pretty stupid for you and we're trying to get a lot of discounted receiver ability stuff and i love slot automatic now after that we get grab and go grab it i'm gonna be honest i think grab and go this year is again like d tier grab and go is always something that i think is a good ability but it's just like it's a good ability to have like it's not broken ever now rack catches are so good this year that I like I use DK with zero AP grab and go. I didn't really notice a difference in my opinion. So, I, you know, they made rack catches so good that I think grab and go just D tier. Now we get return, man. This is something I would run for zero. You can make some stuff shake on kickoff returns, but I don't think it's overpowered. They break the first tackle. Now we got honorary lineman right here. This is one that I always think it's like, okay, this is this is this is for the runners out there. It's all scheme specific as well. If you don't run the ball a lot, I wouldn't recommend running this. And we got leapfrog right here. Leapfrog, in my opinion, the main purpose of this is your hurdle slash jurdles you won't fumble with them right so for that reason again i'm gonna put leapfrog in the c tier i again not something that i think is overpowered by any means backfield mismatch is very similar to um, a, a matchup nightmare for running backs they're catching route running versus linebackers backfield mismatch matchup nightmare like them both again this is specifically for the running back by the way now we get bruiser i don't think bruiser is great this year i think it is probably b tier for bruiser um i think evasive is so much better like like the trucking stiff arming backs it just isn't a great year to do that it's all about the jukes now we get balance beam this is one that i really never noticed i'm gonna go ahead and put that f tier now we get tank where you can't be hit sticked which is pretty nice um especially if they're running like avalanche or something right i you know what i'll put tank in the b tier i don't hate that you know for running back especially like again i i convinced myself because of the avalanches people use but a b tier we get arm bar right here that um is i'm gonna put this d tier it's the stiff arming part of bruiser and i just don't think it's good bulldozer i'll go ahead and put in the c tier actually that's what i'll do i think bulldozer a lot better than arm bar i should say that and and finally right here we get goal line back now goal line back again something nice to have i'm gonna put a b tier more of a luxury than anything but yeah boys this has been my thoughts on every single ability you could run on madden 24 ultimate team uh let me know your guys thoughts down below in the comments and let me know down below if i also didn't miss anything i think i have everything if i am missing something just let me know down below in the comments later this week we will be going over defensive abilities as well if you guys do want to see that make sure to leave a like and subscribe now if you guys do want to go ahead and see me use some of these abilities Live or you have any questions for me live i stream here on youtube and twitch monday through friday 2 p.m to 6 p.m eastern would love to see you on some streams man but if you guys do want another video to watch check out this one right here because i rank the best defensive tackles in madden 24.